Shahdara is the main entry point to Lahore from the north. It lies on the right bank of the river Ravi, across the ancient city. Soon after the Mughals conquered India in 1526, it became a site of architectural and political activity. And a number of wonderful gardens were built here. Shahdara means King's Way had two purposes. One, to have a halting place for the royal camp on its way to Kashmir, Kabul or the hunting grounds of Shekhupura. And the other purpose of these gardens outside the city was recreation. First ever mention of the gardens at Shahdara is found in 1607 when Emperor Jahangir made a stop here on his way to a hunting trip. At that time, the garden was known as Dil Amez. Emperor Nuruddin chose the title Jahangir for himself, meaning the conqueror of the world, when he was coronated in 1605. In 1611, the emperor married Nur Jaha, meaning light of the world. Inspired by her unmatchable beauty, Emperor Jahangir presented the magnificent gardens at Shahdara to his beloved empress as a gift. And from then on, the gardens were called Bare Dil Kusha, garden that pleases the heart. After the 17th century, Shahdara experienced an extraordinary transformation when the emperor was buried here after his death in 1627. Shahdara's character changed from a site of pleasure gardens to a royal funerary landscape. Nur Jahan herself designed and built the magnificent mausoleum for her late husband. It was built in Mughal style, influenced by Safavid architecture from Persia, reminiscent of the Empress's Persian lineage. Construction on the building started in 1627 and took 10 years to complete. The mausoleum's facade is made of red sandstone inlaid with white marble motifs. Four octagonal minarets rise from each corner of the building, decorated with geometric inlaid stones, and are divided into three sections. The tomb forms the base, upon which the body of the minaret rests, topped by white marble cupolas. Jahangi's great-grandfather, Baba, chose to be buried in a tomb open to the sky, Jahangir's tomb broke away with this tradition by including a roof. The perimeter of the mausoleum is lined by arcades. And the building is divided into a series of vaulted compartments which are richly embellished with Mughal Pion fresco. One of the finest specimens of Mughal architecture, the tome is the result of Nur Jahan's vision.
At the center of the mausoleum is an octagonal chamber lined with carved marble in which the remains of the Mughal emperor rest in a crypt. The cenotaph is constructed of solid white marble inlaid with fine petra dura in a floral pattern. and black marble inlay with the names of God in Arabic, which is a common theme in Islamic mysticism. Carved screens called Jali admit light in various patterns facing toward the Muslim holy city of Mecca. The mausoleum is set in a large quadrangle with all four gates facing each of the cardinal directions. Each of the four squares is further divided into smaller squares with pathways. Entry to the quadrangle is via the western edge through the Akbari Sarai. Located between the tombs of Jahangir and Asif Khan, the inn, known as Akbari Sarai, is a large sarai built during the reign of Shah Jahan. The open courtyard of the sarai is flanked on all sides by a raised terrace and rows of 180 cells. To the west of the palace, in the middle of the cell rows, is a mosque. With three domes, it is clad in red sandstone with decorations. Asif Khan was the brother of the Empress Nur Jahan and governor of Lahore. He was also buried in the complex in 1641. In 1799, with the capture of Lahore by Maharaja Ranjit Singh, the complex grounds were desecrated irreparably. The pillage complex was converted into a cantonment of one of his foreign generals who used to live here with his soldiers. The tomb of Asif Khan was built entirely of brick. Its exterior was originally adorned with marble stone and veneered with stucco tracery and blue kashi tiles typical of Lahore. The bulbous dome that crowns the tomb is an innovation of Shah Jahan's era that gave inspiration for later Mughal buildings such as the Taj Mahal. The interior was renowned for its lavish use of white marble, which has since disappeared. The tomb contains the marble cenotaph, carved with Quranic inscriptions.
The inner dome ceiling is decorated in a high plaster relief of interlacing patterns. The tome is of octagonal plan where each side has an alcove with a door and arched window looking into the tome. Despite its simplicity, the architecture and engineering of the tome renders it one of the most fascinating monuments in the neighborhood of Lahore. So archaeology is study of the past through its material remains. Study of archaeology is different from study of history because for study of history it depends mainly and only on written material. Whereas for study of archaeology, you have to study what has been left materially by the people of the past. For any country, uh, their past is known through their monuments and through their archaeological discoveries, you see. Conservation of standing monument is as important as discovering new monuments, discovering new archaeological sites, discovering new material. Conservation is only an attempt to continue the existence of a particular monument. Nur Jahan, the Empress, went on to live another 18 years after Jahangir. She spent later years of her life in Lahore, away from the worldly matters. She oversaw the construction of her final resting place during her own lifetime. Unlike Emperor Jahangir, her mausoleum is the embodiment of simplicity and modesty of her character. The central chamber of the tome contains a marble platform with two cenotaphs, one that commemorates the Empress and the other for her daughter, Ladli Begum. For her tombstone, she inscribed, Bar mazare ma gariba, na charage na gule. Na pare parvana sozat, na sadai bulbule. On the grave of this poor stranger, let there be neither lamp nor rose, let neither butterfly's wing burn, nor nightingale sing. 